Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I am once again the pixelated facsimile of some guy. And I'm here again to introduce you to yet another Wadget Eye game. Yeah. We're moving on with the over-analysis of every single last one of Wadget Eye's creations. Now we on to game number two, The Blackwell Legacy. The very first game in the legendary, is it legendary? Yeah, I won't call it legendary. Blackwell series. The story about a lady and her ghost buddy who solve mysteries. It's better than it sounds. But nevertheless, the Blackwell series has probably been one of the most popular series in adventure gaming since... Oh... What was the last big series in adventure game? Probably The Longest Journey or something like that. And it's probably the first actual American adventure game series to come out since... Oh god... Uh, probably one of the Monkey Island games. Yeah... Oh, wow. America's really kind of been skimping out on adventure games. Thank god we have the rest of the world. But with that said, let's get back to the Blackwell series proper. Now this series is pretty interesting because it's not an episodic series, nor is it really a series of sequels. That sounds confusing, so let me clarify. Basically, you can play every single Blackwell game back to back to back to back, and you'll end up with a very cohesive overarching narrative that strings across a series of games that was released over the period of eight years and featured different artists and even voice actors for some of the main characters. Or... You can just play them as standalone experiences and get a cohesive game with a beginning, middle, and end. Hell, you can even decide to play it in any order you want, and you'll still get the same cohesive narrative. So, I don't quite know what to compare it to, really, because I can't think of any other game series that did this. It's kind of more like a bunch of short stories that someone wrote that were pieced together and turned out to be a cohesive novel. I guess that's probably the best way of putting it. Yeah, it's a pretty unique series, and it's a pretty good one, too. And in fact, just like the Shiva, it began its life as a freeware game that Dave Gilbert expanded upon and improved upon in every single way. Which is a fairly smart thing to do when you think about it. After all, you write what you know and you work with what you know that works. And Dave Gilbert knew that these games were popular already, so why not try to make them better? And sell them for a little bit of money. But anyway, The Black World Legacy was released a mere three months after the Shiva, which makes me think one of two things. One, Dave Gilbert's just pretty much pure coffee now and is able to bang out a game in three months. Or two, he had this in production along with the Shiva. So it makes me wonder how history would have been different had the Blackwell Legacy been released before the Shiva. Ooh. It could have been a very different world, folks. A very different world. Well, <laughs> I should probably just start over analyzing it now, shouldn't I? Well, let's do it, folks. As you can see, the Steam logo is popping up. Which means that I do not actually have an original copy of the Blackwell Legacy. Instead, what we're looking at here is version 1.7, which is an enhanced, improved upon version of the Blackwell Legacy. Although, for the most part, it's pretty much the same game, it just looks better, and there's some slight differences in it. So clearly, Dave Gilbert and Wadget Eye Games have no confidence in my ability to play their game. Although, it's probably not a terrible idea to play through this tutorial. After all, this game features an interesting wrinkle that you don't see very often in adventure games. And I'll talk about it when we get to it. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. A very somber start. And in the original version, our heroine walked on screen instead of already having been standing there. I know. Dave Gilbert's like George Lucas. Hmm. I wonder what that wispy ghost-like sprite was foreshadowing. Alright, now we got the intro, which is cool and all of that, but you really don't need to see the intro. I'm sorry, I'm sure it took some time to make this, but it's not really vital for the whole over-analysis of this game. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Yeah, as you can see, it took me a second to figure out I actually had control over this character. Hi there. Uh, hi? So who are you visiting today? Yeah, this isn't going to be pretty. Oh, ha ha. Seriously, who are you here to see? I can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. 
Hi, welcome to the game's first puzzle. Get inside the building you pay rent to live in. Yeah, this chain-smoking teenager just will not believe we live here. Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. Oh, just wonderful. We're dealing with a scab here. Yeah. Woman, just knee him in the gut and be done with it. You're well within your rights. He's just a dirty scab, and he really shouldn't be smoking. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? This is tedious, folks. This is really tedious. You have to dig through all these dialogue options until eventually you uncover what you need to do. And that's go to the park and fetch your neighbor to prove to this chain-smoking teenager that you live here. Talk about a wonderful beginning to the Blackwell series. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's cool. It's good to know. I'm just trying to get you in your house, lady. Mmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. I know, that was really impressive. Scaling an AGS. Wow, that must have took some time. And oh yeah, now our heroine has mysterious headaches out of nowhere. That's- I recognize her from my building. Yes, yeah, sir, I clicked through some dialogue there. It just kind of springs up when you walk to this point. It's kind of out of nowhere and almost startling. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. And of course our heroine has some sort of anxiety or is just so antisocial that she can't go up and talk to the neighbor even though it's vital that she does. So instead we have to wrap this dog up around a pole to attract the lady. Oh for heaven's sake. Don't worry Moti, I'm coming. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you! The lady next door! Yeah, hi. Why couldn't have this lady been the doorman? It would have made this part of the game so much easier to deal with. But anyway, you tell her what's up, you walk back to your apartment, you ostracize the kid or not, it doesn't really matter, you never see him again, and then you just go into your building. And oh yeah, you made a new friend, it's your neighbor, the kind old Indian lady. And you gotta wonder how she affords rent. I don't know, maybe she makes bank at playing her flute in the park. But anyway, why couldn't have the game started here? Just go in the building, meet the nice lady. Maybe her dog, like, barks at you and you get startled. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it, hi, neighbor, let's be friends. But no, that's not what happened. And I guess that's the legacy of the Blackwell legacy. A kind of not-so-great intro. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. And if it's rent controlled, you're doing real well. Ugh. It almost looked like she mouthed the ringer there. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Oh yeah, that's the lady whose ashes we spread. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. I guess I was just so distracted dealing with a teenage chain smoker, and yeah, I'm letting it go now, folks. I'm letting it go. But anyway, we got a quest now, and that's go to the hospital where Aunt was at comatose for 20 years. To talk to the lovely doctor who cared for her. I don't know if it was for the full 20 years, but hey, he was there at the end. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. And get ready for an info dump, folks, because all of this is kind of important if you're going to understand the plot to this game. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes. Yes, I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? So you get some choose your own narrative stuff here, select whatever reply you want to give to this guy, and then the doctor starts getting a little bit creepy. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition, and yours too, of course. Yeah, right, I bet our condition is you have a chronic case of being single, baby. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, 
Two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes. Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. What a lovely doctor there. Basically, crazy runs in our family. And we've had a kind of a rough life. We were raised by our aunt, who got custody of us when we were five because our parents had died. And then, oh yeah, also I guess around the same time too, our aunt fell into a coma. So I guess we were living the orphan Annie life after that, considering our only known relative is in a coma. Um, maybe we were in foster care. I'm not sure. I don't think the game ever really explains it. So basically, yeah, from the age five to whatever age we are now, it's all a big blank. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. Yeah, the doctor sounds like he's trying to cover his ass there. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. Whoa, someone write an article for The Lancet. I know it's so crazy to think that this lady may have had a grandmother. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got two of them. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. Yeah, it almost seems like he's angry that we stepped on his lines or something. He's like, shut up, I'm trying to monologue here, lady, about your terrible medical condition. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. So yeah, we're just screwed, apparently. Doomed to get dementia. That's just not fun. Oh well, let's learn about our aunt. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right, she had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm. Especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? That apparently you visiting your aunt really aggravated her, and they needed to drug her up so she could tolerate you. Ah, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. Wow, that must have been some kind of living hell for that woman. To be trapped in a near coma-like state and perpetual terrible pain? Yeah, that's just not fun at all. But anyway, the doctor tells us that there's a name uniting all these cases, and that name is Joey. Both our grandmother and our aunt cried out that name a lot for some reason. Hmm. I wonder why, I'm sure we'll find out very soon. So anyway, we chat with the doctor for a little bit longer, and he tells us he's going to mail us our aunt's effects, so we have some more reading to do, folks, once we get back home. Looks like it's from Bellevue. Alright, let's read through this exciting information. Maybe we can find out some really cool stuff about our aunt. Or aunt. I've been saying it both ways for this whole video. Oh my god, I just noticed. Yeah, 25 pages of information to read through. My god. The beginning part of the Blackwell legacy is a marathon of plot. Whew. But anyway, here's what this thing's trying to tell us. We had a grandmother. She went crazy. She cried out the name Joey. She was committed to an insane asylum. And her aunt was in New York going to school while all this was going down. And her brother was keeping her in touch with all the comings and goings, so... Yeah, I guess our aunt and her brother were really tight. But anyway, our aunt started acting really weird, almost like something mysterious was going on with a dude called Joey, and her brother was very concerned about it. And oh yeah, our parents died. Yeah, her brother was our daddy, and he died with our mama under some mysterious circumstances that the game doesn't talk about at all, so... Yeah... That's all that's in the stack of 25 pixelated pages you gotta read through. Hello? Rosangelina, hi. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much for submitting your last review on time. For once. Oh, now we know what our protagonist does for a living. She writes book reviews. For a newspaper. My god, talk about being in two dying professions. Yeah. I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. College girl named Joanne Sherman. That's awful, but... 
You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Yeah, we're a book reviewer, and we're going to be sent on assignment to investigate a mysterious suicide at NYU. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate him so much. I know, I hate it too when my boss makes me work for a living. It's disgusting. I just want to lay around all day. Oh god, I sound like a dirty capitalist defending the boss like that, but you know what I mean. Come on, lady. Just do your damn job. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? I guess it keeps me writing, but... I mean, how else are you going to pay rent? It must be a good paying gig, because New York is not cheap. Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Oh, I know it's all about you, protagonist. You had a very terrible day. You had to spread the ashes of an aunt you hardly knew over a bridge. And then a chain-smoking teenager wouldn't let you in the building, so then you had to get your neighbor to come back to you to the building. Well, you're friends with your neighbor now, so I guess that's good. And then, oh yeah, you had to see the doctor who took care of your aunt, and then you had to go back home, and yeah, now your boss is making you work, so... Actually, now that I think about it, you've had a pretty full day, lady. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter. Sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. Oh boy, I should talk about the notepad. Now the notepad collects interesting and important facts that will help you in your investigation. But also, it serves as kind of like an inventory of clues that you can blend together to get unique answers to then ask characters in the game. And if you don't do this, you can't get very far in the game. So yeah, that's why there's a tutorial in this game. Is that my dad? He looks so young. And yeah, his art style doesn't really match anything else in the game. But whatever, we look at some family photographs, and this will become relevant later. And then we head on to the NYU dorms to investigate a mysterious suicide of a college girl. Ugh. I feel like hell, and I have to interview college kids. Hopefully this won't take too long. Oh, and wouldn't you like to know how easily this is gonna go, folks? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Because this ends part one of the over-analysis of the Blackwell legacy. And at last, we're getting into the meat of the game. We are done with that plot dump. Hopefully we all know what's going on now. There's a mysterious thing happening to our family, and it could happen to us. And there's a dude called Joey who's involved with it somehow. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody in between, I have been some guy, and I'll see you very soon.